What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are focusing on one of my favorite topics, some base building tips. These are some crucial things that you should not be doing when you're building your bases. We're gonna jump right into it, blow through these, give you guys all the information you need uh, without too much time wasted. Starting with this first one, Town Hall 10, all the way through Town Hall 13. I've been seeing it a lot, people putting their Inferno Towers near other defenses within that compartment. Don't do it for a number of reasons. One, the Lightning Spell is going to get a lot of value, especially like at Town Hall 11 with the Lightning Spell Witch strategy. They can not just take out the Inferno now, but they could in this compartment, for example, take out the Expo, oops, the Expo as well, the Bomb Tower, the Inferno. Um, you're giving them too much lightning spell value and then also as you go up uh, Town Hall 12 and 13 uh, you're going to have the issue of a Yeti blimp bomb to eliminate a compartment like this and get the attack a good value. So instead you're going to want to do something like this. Storages are a great thing to put near them. For Town Hall 10 and 11 this will make the lightning spell really ineffective because the lightnings won't even damage the storages so they won't get much value if they want to take out your inferno that's all they're going to get not even anything else in that compartment, defense or not. Um, and it's also going to be tough for miners as they move through because they're going to get stuck on these high hit point buildings while the Inferno Towers are working on them. Uh, and it, it just keeps uh, other defenses away from these important Inferno Towers. And if it's a single Inferno, which you might have at Town Hall 12 or 13, um, the attacker still has to worry about it if they're doing a queen charge or something. Uh, so they're going to still have to invest stuff to take it out but they're not going to get the added benefit of getting other defenses along the way by putting storages near it. So I'd recommend doing that. Um, another uh, kind of mistake that I see, I think it's a mistake, is putting the entire Tesla farm on the outside of the base. This is going to allow a king or like a Sui hero, just the queen, something small to take out your entire Tesla farm. Now keep in mind you should be guarding it with uh, skeleton traps, at least one of them. Uh, to prevent like a king from taking out the entire thing or a P.E.K.K.A or whatever. But also a lot of the spam attacks uh, or even just attacks in general are going to clear out most of the base and then the troops are going to exit and be walking around the outside. So the Tesla farm might not even be in, you know, in the ball game until it's already over. By putting a couple of the Teslas like there for example and there within the walls, you're going to kind of make it more difficult for an attacker to take out the entire Tesla farm. And you can even have a couple even deeper in the base, still being a Tesla farm, getting you that extra value of a lot of damage in one spot, but keeping it uh, more central to the base, and uh, which is it's going to be more effective and it's going to be able to put up a fight and help protect other defensive buildings. Whereas if it's just on its own, oftentimes if the queen is up with healers on her, she can take it out easily at the end of the attack. So. You want it to still be in play before it's too late for your base. This one, very simple. Um, I still see people doing it. Don't put your uh, tornado trap next to your, uh, sorry, not expo, next to your air defense, especially if you're a town hall like 11 or below. I think town hall 10 doesn't even have a tornado. So uh, town hall 11 or below, because if a lava hound goes to it, it'll uh, disarm the trap and the lava hound isn't going to care if it's in it or not. It's meant for balloons, so keep it, you know, at least like this, you know, distance away from the nearest air defense. Another uh, important thing to point out there. Also, this is kind of a no-brainer. The eagle, if you ever have it three tiles, you can count them, one, two, three, away from the wall, the queen can reach it from like out here or out here. So just look at your bases, not just the eagle, the eagle probably most importantly, but also other important defensive buildings, scattershot, town hall maybe, uh, going lower, inferno towers. That type of stuff, you want to make sure you have that gold number of four walls, uh, four tiles, excuse me, between the defense and the walls making it so a queen from outside the compartment cannot reach the eagle. It's going to be really effective, not just against queen charges, but against spam attacks of any kind, really, where the queen's going into the base. So make sure to do that. Don't have those lazy compartments. Moving right along, I don't understand why you would put your air traps next to the town hall for town hall 12 and 13, because about 90% of attacks, the warden's ability is being used over the town hall. So if you're hoping to take out like dragons or balloons, 
the warden's tome is going to be used there, there's just no point. It's just going to get soaked up by troops that can't take any damage for that period of time. Maybe a Seeking Air Mine if you're really worried about your Town Hall being Queen Charged, but if that's the case, make it harder to Queen Charge your Town Hall. Put these elsewhere, not near your Town Hall. Same with a Giant Bomb. There's no point putting a Giant Bomb next to your Town Hall, except in some very uh, unique exceptions. But for the most part, don't put uh, any of these traps near your Town Hall. Uh, this other one is also kind of a lazy thing base builders do. If you have a wizard tower on the outside of your base and then it's, there's like a defense sitting right here, you want to adjust it so it can, uh, you can make it so ice golems can't tank your wizard tower. This is to prevent bat spells from being used. Your, the attacker doesn't have much space for freezes, so they're hoping they can tank your wizard towers using ice golems. Um, however, they're using bats, it doesn't even really matter. If you kind of spread things out, like put your cannon there, and let's say you have a mortar, you can put like out over here. Even a wizard tower that's in theory, like on the very close to being on the outside of the base, it might have to be one tile back for this to work. Um, you know, you start to fill in other trash buildings here. Now it's difficult. I don't think an ice golem can really tank the wizard tower how it's set up right now, because the ice golem's gonna split to one of these defenses. It's going to make it much harder for bat spells to be used. Basically take that out of the equation if you do it right across all your wizard towers. Um, it's not much of a cost for you as a base builder besides just being aware of it and doing it. Um, I think we might be on our last one. Yeah, here we go. Um, once again, another lazy thing. I call it lazy because it's so easy to just to not do this and to um, eliminate this little uh, this thing that can be exploited in your base. If you take a look at what's wrong with this compartment that would be on the outside of the base, um, it's not the compartment, it's the buildings on the outside. By having this high hit point elixir storage, you're allowing the attacker, assuming there's no air defenses in like these compartments or a hero or something, you're allowing them to drop an E-Dragon, an Electro Dragon, take out your storage and also have that go back and start to target other buildings back here gain them really good value. So if you have an area of your base, especially there's no like queen, royal champion, air defense that would make it really hard, a, a clan castle even, um, those would all make it hard to use an, an electro dragon. But if those are not there, you have gotta make sure your uh, buildings are like that on the outside of your base. So any uh, attack from an electro dragon, the chain cannot reach a two tile gap between buildings. So you're not gonna have any of these buildings inside the compartment be damaged by the Electro Dragon. Okay, uh, all in one breath. <sighs> Hope uh, that helped guys. Um, these are some tips you can incorporate into any base, but if you want your own bases each month, check out my Patreon link in the description. A few other things I want to go over for my regular subscribers guys. Um, the uh, viewer poll presented by my creator code bisect please enter that every week um, you will get good luck and it also helps me so b-i-s-e-c-t every week in the shop uh, or in your settings I guess is where you enter it uh, and I really appreciate that but to the poll um, I asked you guys a couple days ago how many Clash of Clans accounts do you have it's an interesting question and I was a little bit surprised I mean there was Obviously, a lot of people that have one or two accounts, which I expected, but the four or more, 23%, almost a quarter of you guys, rocking uh, four plus accounts. People in the comments were saying they had something like 28 accounts. Um, I don't know what to believe. I have, uh, I have four that I use somewhat regularly, although only one of them I'm actually farming. The other three, I just hop on, war attack. Sometimes it's as quick as training up super witches and then boom on it for like 10 minutes i do my attacks i'm done um so i don't spend a lot of time on that but i do have four accounts i use so i guess i would fall in that category as well um but respect to the people out there with one or two accounts it's probably a little bit nicer on your life to not worry about so many of them uh stay tuned for the next poll we'll be out in a little bit and uh always love giving you guys some info uh, on, on the viewers and what everyone thinks about certain things. Last thing guys, um, a quick shout out to my second channel, totally not related to Clash. If you're interested in space and space exploration, check out Exploring Space. I'll link it in the description of this video in case you want to see what else I make on YouTube. Um, 
just got back into it more recently. I kind of have been on and off, but I'm going to start committing to a regular upload once a week. So uh, if you check it out, I definitely appreciate it. And yeah, that'll do it for today's video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed and hope these tips were helpful. I will see you all next time. Until then, signing off. Here's the end screen. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, bisect, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.